What's up, guys? It's good to see you back here this week. As you know, I upload every Monday at 9 a.m. This is my third Monday upload in a row, so I'm on a roll here. Hopefully, we can keep it going for next Monday and just continue this on out, and it'll be my regular schedule with maybe a special video here and there every other Thursday or one Thursday a month. I don't know. We'll see. Probably not, but we'll see. But if you've been following me for a while, maybe this is actually how you found me, is I created the open source computer science degree at the beginning of last year, 2019. And then later in the year, I actually adjusted it, added in a few minor adjustments, added to it, changed some things uh, later in the year. And now I'm going to be taking a lot of y'all's advice and creating a Python track for the open source computer science degree. However, I did create an entirely new repository and you may be asking why didn't I just branch off my other repository because the whole idea of branching is to eventually merge that unique code that you created a branch for into your master branch. However, I never want the, the Python track to overwrite the original open source computer science degree where I did all Java courses or mostly Java courses. Maybe this would be better fitted in like a wiki under the open source computer science degree repo now that I think about it, but I've already made it. So we're just gonna go ahead with uh, what I did. So what you see on the right, this is the original open source computer science degree. Very, very popular. Apparently it was on GitHub trending uh, the very first week that I had created this and made the video and, and, and the repo was alive. But it was a curated list of free courses from reputable universities like MIT, Stanford, Princeton that satisfy the same requirements as an undergraduate computer science degree minus general education. It's the same exact thing with the Python open source computer science degree, however, the main difference is you will see in the programming section, you'll see that all of these courses from here up are Java programming. And the reason for that is because that is my main language, Java. And well, I put together the open source computer science degree. I really like Java. I think it's a very good language for your first language to learn. It teaches you a lot. And I think it's easier to take the principles from Java over to languages like Python than it is to take Python over to Java. However, that may or may not be true. I could just be biased, but that's why I decided to go with Java uh, off the get. But now that I've done a little bit more Python programming, I figured it was appropriate timing to do the Python programming. So let's take a full focus on the, the Python open source computer science degree. So we have computer science basics, we have programming, we have math, we have data science, we have systems, we have theory, we have applications, and we have Unix. Every course is the same except for any courses that required a Java programming course as a prerequisite. So I took out any of those. I also added in the data science section. All of this, as you can see, is Python, 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 which I think a lot of y'all are probably gonna take this data science uh, uh, tract right here. And then of course, like I just said, all of the courses in programming have been switched from Java to Python while still going over all the basics and finishing it off with a type of capstone project. So to go over the layout here, what we have are courses, that's self-explanatory. We have the school in which those courses are offered. And a lot of these are through third, I'll, I'll say third party sites uh, being Coursera or edX or Udacity on some, which Udacity I think is original to Udacity. So that's not technically third party. Duration and effort go hand in hand. So it'll take you 10 weeks to complete the intro to computer science course if you put in 10 to 20 hours per week. You have the frequency, which is how often you're able to enroll in the course. In all honesty, all of these, if not most, most of these will definitely be self-paced. And as a matter of fact, I already know that this one is self-paced as well, but I carried this over from the old OSCS. But I'll, I'll get around to the frequency on some of these older courses in both repositories sooner or later. And then prerequisites, that's self-explanatory as well. You will see that prerequisite for the first programming course, that is none. For the second one, it is the first programming course. For the third one, it is the second programming course, so on and so forth. So. Let's dive into what I have changed. And if you want any further detail on how to go about getting these courses for free, I go over that more in depth in my previous video. I'll link that up in the I right up here. I'll probably link it down in the description as well. And then I'm also gonna link the the adjustments video, the, the video I made about the adjustments and, and pull requests and things of that nature that I did for the original OSCS in case you want to really dive in into understanding this. But I know a lot of people aren't taking all of these for free, like for Coursera, 
where you just take one and then if you want the certificate, then you'll have to pay or you go in for a full specialization, which that's what this is right here. Specialization, it has like four or five courses. You pay and then you're able to get the certificate to prove that you went through these courses. And I don't know what that does for employers if they like that or don't. I know for for the courses, the skills that you learn, those are the most, that that's the most important, not necessarily the certificate. However, the certificate wouldn't hurt right so so with that being said all of these courses that are offered by coursera if you do end up paying for it are offered in coursera plus which if you go through all of these and pay for all of these then coursera plus will end up being cheaper and i will leave a link to coursera plus down in the description below if we can ever convince coursera to give uh, g give us a discount. I'll talk with them, try to see if they can give us a discount a any particular month. Then I'll leave that in the description as well. But as of right now, it, it's it's an overall discount on a course by course basis, but not a discount on Coursera Plus itself. So check that out if you're interested in going that route. But for programming, you start off with programming for everybody getting started with Python. So prerequisites are none and everything that has prerequisites are none you probably want to take those in the single semester. So treat this like a computer science degree where you're going to be taking multiple courses at once. So while you take the programming for everybody getting started with Python course, you could also be taking intro to computer science as well as mathematical thinking in computer science. You could also be taking something like intro to statistics as well as, well, maybe some Linux command line basics or Unix workbench. So anything that has no prerequisites, take maybe commit to like three or four if you have a full-time job and you're busy, if for some reason you're out of work right now and you're just trying to focus fully on this, then maybe you can get by with four or five. So that, that's all user discretion based on the duration and effort that you care to put in each and every week. So just take that into consideration. And then right after you get done with your programming for everybody to get done with that semester, you wanna move on to Python data structures. So Python data structures, four weeks, four to six hours per week, self-paced, meaning you can enroll whenever you want, and you should be good to go there. Using Python to access web data. Now, this doesn't sound as technical as some of the courses that we had over on the uh, the Java side of things. You know, you had, you had uh, data structures of performance, you had arrays, lists, and structured data, you had, da you had principles of software design. And using Python to access web data, that sounds a little bit like a, like a beginner type title. However, when you come on over to what this course is about, you will see that you're gonna be using Python to scrape, parse, and read web data, access data using web APIs, HTML, XML, JSON. So don't be, don't shy away from this because it's not a very technical title because the information that you learn in this course is technical itself. So you're gonna be manipulating files, Python data structures, uh, more in depth of Python data structures from the course previously to it. So you're gonna use that knowledge in here in a, in a practical scenario. So you're actually gonna use Python to access web data. And the same thing goes for using databases with Python, which, is, uh, which comes right after access web data, where you're gonna be using SQL in, in Python in order to manipulate data in databases and things of that nature. And then you, you finish off your programming part. And I guess this will technically be in your final semester with a capstone project of retrieving, processing, and visualizing data with Python. And that's actually one of the coolest things that, that, that I like about Python is the ability to, to visualize your data with Python. And this capstone project will actually capture that, of course. And just to give you a little sneak peek of it, well, just look at the titles. Of course, welcome to Capstone, but building a search engine. What in the world are you gonna to do to build a search engine? Google paint drink algorithm? That's pretty cool. Exploring data sources, spidering and modeling email data. And of course, visualizing the email data, visualizing new data sources. Okay, cool. So what does this look like? This looks like you're actually, for your Capstone, you're creating one, two, three projects in your single Capstone uh, course, which I think that's pretty cool. However, while that one is the more popular specialization, and by specialization, I mentioned this previously, is that if you come all the way up here, you'll see that this course is part of the Python for Everybody specialization. And this is actually an entire specialization, but I wanted to lay it out uh, properly so you get a better understanding, you could fit in with, with the rest. So when we come down to courses, you will see that 
all five of those courses that I listed are listed right here. Not as creative as my Java programming track, but hey, it, it, they put this together for a reason and I didn't see any, any holes in this, so I didn't need to fill it just like I did with the Java programming offered at Duke. So, I mean, it, it still works. But with the Python 3 programming specialization, while not as popular, it is offered by the same school, you will see that I think it has four, maybe it still has five, and it goes over Python basics, function files, dictionaries, data collection and processing with Python, Python class and inheritance. See, this is more, more technically titled, but for the most part, you can look into the descriptions. You will be going over a lot of the same things. I'm sure they'll take their own specific paths within each of these specializations on Coursera. However, it's just kind of personal preference from that point. If you don't know what you want to do, either one is fine, then just, I would say roll with this one because I believe that uh, while this one is five months in total, if you do seven hours a week, if I did the math correctly, this one is only three months in total if you do seven hours a week. I know it doesn't look like it right here. No, it's three and a half months total if you do seven hours a week because those 3.4666. So let's round up to four months at doing four to six hours a week while this one is five months. So whatever you want to do. Math is the same. Data science is new. All of this is an entirely new track. In all honesty, I should probably include this data science on the main repository. I should probably add this or at least a version of this to there because data science is very popular. A lot of people like it. Introduction to data science in Python. This, you're not going to be able to take the first semester. You have to have basic programming knowledge. Maybe I can go back and say, instead of just basic programming knowledge, just have at least, probably at least one of these courses under your belt. Probably two just to be safe, maybe three, just to be real safe, okay, whatever. But you need to have basic programming knowledge and then applied plotting, charting, and data representation in Python, applied machine learning in Python. If you didn't notice down in the applications area, I removed the machine learning course out of there and there's two reasons for that. One is I want to be able to say that any course offered by Coursera and this is included in Coursera Plus and that one actually is not. You can still take it for free though if you sign up and you do the trial. So just remember that. Just come on over to here and, and you'll be able to see it right here. Click on this. You, wait, is this? Sorry, I removed this one because it had to do job programming. The machine learning is what I'm talking about. And once you finish linear algebra, because remember you have to have a good understanding of linear algebra and other, other math in order to actually understand machine learning, you're able to take this for free. You just do the enroll for free trial period and I think you can take the whole entire course. So just keep that in mind. That's why I took it out is because we have machine learning under the data science track. We have applied text mining in Python. Then we have applied social network analysis in Python. And while I say each one of these is a prerequisite of another, that is because it kind of, it's, it, this is all in the same specialization as well. So if we take a look here, introduction to data science of Python is all part of applied data science with Python specialization. Come down to courses it'll all be the same. So while in theory, you could you could probably take, you know, applied machine learning with a basic programming knowledge and, and linear algebra prerequisite instead of having to take these two prior to it, but I, all of these mesh well together if you want the whole emphasis in data science of computer science uh, open source degree, right? So that is why I added these as prerequisite because under the section of data science, it is a prerequisite. And then, that is basically it. We have systems, we have theory, we have applications, and we have Unix. All of that, if you, like I said, if you wanna know more about everything that this entails, if you are new to the channel or new to this idea, check out the other video that I linked up here that goes over everything in the original open source computer science degree. And it'll, it'll make a lot more sense to you. So. That's really what I wanted to do. If I, I really want this to be a collaborative effort. So if there's anything that I may have missed that would actually be better suited towards Python, like in the systems or theory or application section, uh, uh, go on GitHub and add a pull request. Throw in the courses that you think would be better fitted. I'm not sure if any of these have Java as their main language and you could replace it with something like Python. I know a lot of these have different languages and that's kind of part of your computer science journey is you don't want to only do Python, 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 or Java, Java, Java. 
uh, in all honesty, maybe I should have included these programming courses here because this goes over how to take your knowledge from programming uh, of a particular programming language to another programming language. So go from Java to C++ or C++ to C Sharp or C Sharp to Python. That's what this, these three courses are all about. And maybe I should, uh, maybe I should have included that in here. That's the type of stuff I need help with. I want this to be a collaborative effort, like I said before. So just uh, my GitHub is github.com slash farsnight. It is also always linked in the description below. Check out all those links. Those should help you if you're interested in learning computer science, coding, whatever, and you wanna uh, also add on to this repository. And I feel like I've been rambling a lot and maybe repeating myself at times, but this is a very more laid back video. I just wanted to share what I put together for all those people who would rather do Python than Java. So hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all next Monday at 9 a.m. with a brand new video going over my very first machine learning program I ever coded. I think that'll be a really fun one. It was really fun when we went over my first program that I ever coded. So for my first machine learning program, I'm excited to see what y'all say about that. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these videos. Don't subscribe if you're not, because if you subscribe and don't watch the content, then that hurts the algorithm. If you subscribe and watch the content, then that helps the algorithm. You know what else helps the algorithm? Is liking this video. I don't do it for vanity marks. I, I, I don't care about how many likes I get. I just want to be able to share as, uh, my content with as many people as possible. And you liking this video and commenting down below anything just to help out the algorithm will help this video get pushed to more people on YouTube. More people will discover computer science and coding in my channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you could do that for me. I'll see y'all next week. I almost forgot to address this, but most people are gonna comment before now anyway. And if you were expecting the video of the operating system and, and going over the Arch Linux Rice, I'm actually gonna be redoing the entire Arch Linux because of what I mentioned in last video. and. I've decided to postpone that video for another, I think two weeks. I think not next Monday, I just told you what that was all about, but the following Monday is when I'm gonna be going over the operating system and then we'll be getting back into some of the machine learning, AI learning uh, to beat video game type videos. But I figured I'd address that because uh, I think last video I promised that this video is gonna be the operating system video. So.